But first, big banks kicking off first quarter earnings this week. J.P. Morgan Chase posted better than expected earnings, reporting $2.65 a share and $29.85 billion in revenue. Wells Fargo also beat expectations, reporting a $1.20 a share in earnings on revenue of $21.61 billion. Joining me right now to react to that and the first quarter earnings is the Bonson Group founder and chief investment officer, David Bonson. And it is great to have you, David. Always good to see you. Thanks, Maria. Thanks so much for joining us. So let's talk JPM and Wells Fargo first. What did you make of those earnings? earnings. What, uh, did, what did you take away? The, the JPM numbers were fantastic. And, and one of the things that's different than Wells Fargo is that they were fantastic in every silo. It was loan growth. It was deposit growth. It was credit quality, the investment banking franchise. I still believe that literally 10 years later, those acquisitions of Washington Mutual and Bear Stearns at the bottom of the financial crisis are just now starting to be appreciated in JP Morgan's income statement. They're generating cash flow that their competitors are not generating from these kind of, you know, additional entities they have in the fold. Yeah, you're right, because you had um, net interest up a 4% on core loan growth. Fees were better than expected. Expenses were also better than expected as well. They're trying to get expenses down. That include $100 million in charitable contribution. Even the uh, IBD that was uh, uh, cost decelerated, card loss rate down year over year. Guidance was good? Yeah, it was. And I think that he was, what Jamie said this morning on the call was that they are seeing even better things into the uh, later portion of the year. Now, I will point out, they raised their dividend 40% in the third quarter of last year. This is after consistent annual dividend growth every year for the last 10 years. So when they raised that dividend late last year, that is the whole point we believe about dividend growth. It signifies to us what management believes about their own future. So what does this tell us about the overall first quarter earnings season? Because going into this quarter, there have been such negativity. Yeah. I mean, you know, estimates went all the way down to down 4% year over year in the first quarter. Do you think we're going to actually report or see reports of better than expected lowered estimates? That, you put it exactly right. <laughs> it will be better than expected lower estimates. So we will end up year over year for quarter one only having negative earnings growth. And I think it will end up being somewhere one or two handle, not four handle. Okay. Um, but I would be careful on the first day of a couple, because this happens all the time. Sometimes the banks come out with it's bad true. numbers. It's true. And it ends up being a great earnings season and vice versa. So we really don't. So we don't know yet. But I will say that going into the end of the year, revisions are coming higher now. They were overdone in Q4. But but the, the guidance is yeah. really important because a lot of people on Wall Street that I'm speaking with are telling me, Maria, we all know what went on in the first quarter. We remember what happened at the end of 18 with that bad market. And we're looking ahead to 2020. Is that true? or is well, that Oh, it's true now. But it's also true as a function of markets. They are what we call discount mechanisms. They're pricing in about the future, not the present, and let alone the past. We already knew that Q4 had challenges in the credit markets, the Fed now on their hands. Q1 was interesting because market pricing really came higher, but the fundamentals inside company operations, we didn't know. Now we're going to hear more, but if you look at what J.P. Morgan reported and use it as some barometer, I think the U.S. economy is healthy, and I think margins are still holding in tight. And how many times we get to see that. 5% earnings growth, 5% revenue growth. Margins were completely fine. You think that overall the year is going to be better than expected. So this is just the first quarter. You think overall for 2019, we're going to see a positive show. I feel that confidently with one caveat. If the trade war is not resolved, then all bets are off. Okay. Business confidence dries up. Business inve investment. Well, CapEx is the big thing we look to. If CapEx doesn't accelerate, then that changes our, our our projection. You had very strong numbers on China um, at the end of the week. Uh, exports were up strongly, much better than estimates. You had good numbers from J.P. Morgan and, and Wells, the bank earnings. You had a big deal in the oil sector, Chevron acquiring Anadarko uh, for $33 billion. That was $65 a share on Anadarko. It seems like you've got more and more good news coming out. And I said this last week, everybody's got their head on fire looking for this recession. It's not happening. No, and you so, 
also have credit spreads that have tightened dramatically. So how do you have a recession when, when credit spreads are coming in, credit's flowing that way? Um, I think that the caveat is still about the trade war. That could change things. But it's not just that 2019 doesn't foretell a recession. It's that 2020 doesn't foretell a recession. That right now, unless you have a total evaporation of business investment, the economy is working very well. And a couple of the other positive metrics you didn't mention in that great list yeah. is wage growth. Right. The consumer has more money. 3.2% year over year. Yeah, and, and it's really going to tick higher to 34 this year, we believe. And, and, and that isn't inflationary. There's productivity that is absorbing it. So we just think that you have a great U.S. economic backdrop and earnings is reflecting that. Earnings are reflecting that in the stock market. I want to share something with our viewers. You heard it here first. Europe is improving. I want to get your take on this because I'm hearing from a lot of sources recently who've been in Europe. Now, for a while, we were saying they're lucky to get 1% economic growth in the Eurozone yeah. this year. It's not obviously complete turnaround, but we are seeing some signs that we're seeing some signs of recovery in Europe. That's a big deal. It is. And it also doesn't need to be recovery in Europe. It just needs to be not as bad as people had expected. I think that's what you're saying, David. Yeah, well, it, it, could, it will play out that way. They're, they're probably going to go add more stimulus, both fiscally and maybe even monetary. By monetary stimulus, I mean just slowing down what he had talked about doing. Um, I, I still have a lot of question marks about Europe yeah. going forward because that uncertainty lingers. Long term, we don't believe the euro currency is sustainable. Mm. And so it's difficult to make a big long term bet there. But to your point, Maria, if it isn't as bad as people expected this year, that bodes well for U.S. equity investors. Exactly. Yeah. All bets are off if we get more tariffs there, however. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And I would like to think that we're not going there, but we'll see. David, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks. Mary. Thanks so much. David Bonson. Stay right there. A former FDIC chair, Sheila Baer, my guest after this break.